All right, we're picking up something cool today. Um, we've got to drive quite a ways to get there, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. So this is what we're picking up. A 1974 Moto Trike Tri Sport. Um, it's the 340 cc version street legal with a title i think it's pretty sweet um they only made a couple of them too i don't think they made too many of them uh, they made smaller sizes and stuff but this one's really cool and it's it's super cool um, i guess it comes with a spare engine a colder engine so we'll see if we can get that thing started today i guess it's been sitting for a long time and um he said he can't get spark on it so we'll, we'll get there, see if we can film, and uh, see if we can bring this thing home. All right, we got the beast in the back there. Pretty cool machine. I guess they've owned it for a really long time and just sat there and they were going to work on it, get it running, but they never did. Um, it does pull over. I pulled it over so it's not stuck or locked up um, and they were really nice. So They uh, didn't go down in price. I guess a lot of people were interested in it and they were holding firm at the $1,000 mark. So I ended up paying. $1,000 for it, which I think is a little bit high, but they're pretty rare, so I don't know, and it's pretty complete. It'll be pretty cool if we can get this thing going. So we'll, we'll get back home, take a closer look at it, and start digging into it. It's going to be a fun project. All right, here's the old title for it. Pretty cool. I'm not going to put you guys' address down. Date of issue, 75. It's pretty crazy. So a title, we'll see if it matches up with the bike. But it's cool that it even has a title. Alright, check this thing out. <laughs> pretty cool. It's got the old Kohler snowmobile engine in it. They came stock like that. So it's belt driven into a chain drive. <laughs> it's missing the calipers for the back. Looks like those weren't down there for a long time. Everything's pretty rusty. There are grease fittings though in here, that's nice. So the whole engine is complete, even has the air filter and everything on it. it has the pipe out the back here. You can see made in Canada right there and the pull cord comes right through the seat right here. Got good compression yet. That's pretty cool. It's got the old school seat. It says all sport on it, tri-moto. Look at the gauges up here. Key. It's a key original. That's an old key. Little sticker right there. Cool headlight and blinkers. So you know this is the street legal one because it has the lights and the blinkers on it. And then here's the other piece for the back. You can see Z350 on it. It's got the old Valvoline sticker. Check out the plate though, April of 79, it was last registered. <laughs> so it's been a while, but that's a really cool rack on the back. And it came with a spare engine as well. Looks like another Kohler engine. So I paid a thousand bucks for this thing. This is for the rear brakes right here. Those aren't going to anything, but check out this old master cylinder <laughs> it's locked up and here's the brake for the front it actually works it looks like a kill switch of some sort or lights right here might be lights and then here blinkers I think right here I believe or that might be blinkers I don't know 
One of them's lights, one of them's blinkers. It's got suspension, front and rear. <laughs> Little bumper in the back. Looks like somebody was doing some burnouts with this thing. But yeah, this thing's basically just a triangle frame. And I guess the spokes were an option back in 74. You could have the front spoked wheel, or I think they made them like the rear right here, where it was just standard like that. So, very unique machine. We'll get off the trailer, and we'll get the back piece on, and we'll start working on this thing. It's not that heavy. This thing's you gotta fly. 340 cc engine in it. And it's really light. So that's what's in a snowmobile. Those are about five times heavier. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's pretty cool. Fiberglass is all pretty decent too. Like the front fender isn't even broken, just like a couple small pieces. Thing is like really cool looking. All the lights are intact. Look at that thing. <laughs> that is super unique. That is really cool. Really, really cool. All right, this is probably one of the coolest things I've gotten to work on in a while. So, I'm pretty excited to get digging into this thing. It's just really, really cool. It looks like it's missing the, the seat that goes right here, the seat uh, cushion. But it does have the original seat and head pad. It's just really retro looking, isn't it? It's so cool. But like, look how good the chrome is, the lights are all intact. It looks like somebody at least took care of it, you know? Wow, it's not in bad shape. Not in bad shape at all. Unfortunately, the gas tank is cracked. I think we can probably get a new gas tank for it if we have to. And like obviously like the grips are, are worn down and stuff and that's all typical stuff that's gonna get worn down after how many years? Over 50 years, so. Yeah. And then you put your feet up here on it. That's how you ride it. <laughs> All right, well, let's start piecing this thing back together. I know the wiring's probably messed up on it, so let's try to get that done. And uh, I guess we'll try to get spark on this thing. So unfortunately, the gas tank is cracked. You can see comes up over there. Somebody must have done something that cracked and split the whole thing. So you might have to just put like a temporary, like smaller one in there. That's kind of like the same design. If we can find one, they're just like a bottle of gas. It doesn't have to be that big. But uh, this comes out. We'll just see how those wires are connected up there. Gas cap is nice. Just comes out like that. So I'm guessing we can find a gas tank fairly similar to that if we have to. Looks like the wiring for the lights and everything hook up to here. And those hook up to here, I'm guessing. Four prong, yellow and green. Cool. So that looks like those go to there. All right, let's get this air filter off first so we don't suck that into the engine when we're pulling it over. So these little springs have to come off and then we can get that air filter off of there. 40 cc. You can see 338.1 cc. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. 
and that looks like it used to have electric start at one point because you can see the solenoid is right here. This is a lead to the battery for a positive end and then a lead to the case. So it used to have electric start and let's just see if the key yep, is springy. Yep, you can see so it used to have electric start which would be awesome. Let me just see where the starter would have been. And on the other side here, you can see right here, that's the starter gear. Oh yeah, right there you can see the hole for where the starter used to sit. That'd be cool to get a starter for it too. I know there's some out there on eBay for a colder engine. So, if that solenoid works, we'd be in business. Let's get that air filter off and uh, start digging into this engine. see that piece of foam has seen better days here. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that away. And basically it's just the, the cage and some springs holding that on. Alright, let's see. See if the throttle opens here. Oh yeah. Cool, throttle does work and open. So that's awesome. Let's get these spark plugs out. All right, so this is a dual cylinder. Let's get these spark plugs out of here. If you even got the plug protectors on it, that's crazy. Champion plugs. Pretty loose in there. We're gonna get some oil down here. If this thing's been sitting for like, when was the last registered? In like, 79 or something? Let's see. Yeah, 79. So it's been sitting for a long time. Ooh, plugs look a little rough. <laughs> Maybe we'll have spark. Maybe they didn't even check it. But I'm guessing they did. That one was loose in there too, it looks like. They definitely checked spark. So hopefully we can get something here. There's that plug. Looking a little rough as well. All right, let's get some oil down there. This thing probably hasn't seen oil in 40 years. So we've got some oil in it. Let's turn the key. Let's turn the key to on. There's two settings. One must be for a light too. So there's off, on, light, and then electric start. So we'll go to that one. I don't know if there's a kill switch on here. That might be a kill switch right here. So we'll try it both ways. We'll see. Looks like there's a horn on it too. I don't know if it still has it. Oh yeah, there's still a horn on it. So that must be the horn, I'm guessing. Let's see. Horn. I'm guessing those are lights, but it could be a kill switch. Because that would be high or low, I'm guessing. I can't read the 
the pr there's some type of print on here. I can't read it. So we'll try with it up first. And we'll spin this thing over. See what happens. The key is on. switch the other way if it's a kill switch. Not getting anything. Nothing whatsoever. Um, Maybe the ignition isn't working. So let's try the key on that way. Try it on that setting. Let's see if we get any spark here. Kill switch the other way. Nothing. Nothing. All right, so we're not getting anything. No spark whatsoever. All right, we're just gonna try a different spark plug just to make sure it's not the plug here. Let's see if we get anything here. Key is all the way on. Pull this over. Nothing. Nothing. All right, so it's not the plug. Let's just try these caps. A little WD-40 in there. We're gonna take a screwdriver. It's gonna get up all the rust. Sometimes if it's not making contact, obviously it won't spark. So just kind of get the rust out of there. It's really rusty in there. Most likely it's going to be the points, but we'll rule everything else out before we check those. Let's just see. Maybe we'll get lucky here. Nada. Nothing. All right, let's hook up a battery to it and just see if the lights turn on here. I don't think you need a battery for this thing to run, but we've got our jumper pack here. Negative to this one. And then positive to the terminal over here. This one's positive. All right. I don't think anything turned down here. <phone rings> Nothing's turning on.
This has to be connected to here as well. The lights turn on here. No lights yet. No horn. Alright, the ground on the engine is right here. I'm wondering if that's, you know, not making a good connection. There are a lot of things going to that ground, so. I wonder if it's just not very good. Get it back to the shiny metal that it once was. <laughs> So this is negative. Negative feeds the yellow wire. It's like a yellowish white wire right here. So we're gonna follow that up and see where that leads to. All right, I followed that white wire up. It leads to ground up on the front of the machine here. So I was doing a continuity test between the switches here and there was no continuity between any of them, even on in any position, so. I think there's something wrong with the switch is what I'm figuring here. All right, here's the switch. So with the key on, you should have continuity between some of these. There wasn't anything. So let's just see. We'll hook up a meter to this. That's off right there. So I'm guessing that's when black and black touch. So let's just get our gauge out. So we should hear a beep between at least two of them. I hear anything. So, let's see. Here, a little bit right there. Thought I did. Maybe not. Nothing. Okay, so that one and that one. These two right here in the off position. So those two are touching in the off position. Those are the only two touching right there. So these two, and those plug into what look to be black. Black and black. So black and black are touching in the off position, which is accurate. All right, so that's good. Now let's see if anything turns on in the on position. So flip it one. Okay, so now the black ones should not be touching. That one's working. Okay, so in the on position, we've got these two, which lead to, we've got yellow, looks like yellow, hard to tell. Yellow, oh, this thing comes off, that helps. We've got yellow, 
brown and like a pinkish color and and then gray and yellow that's interesting all right let's see what we get here all right let's see what we get oh the horn works <laughs> do the lights work yet let's see <laughs> lights don't appear to be working Maybe there need to be one more switch here. Well, we've got the horn working. <laughs> Maybe the lights only turn on once the machine's running. Oh, electric start's working. You can hear the solenoid click when the electric start turns on. All right, this wiring is just a mess. Nothing matches up. You can see it's all reconnected with stuff. Like nothing matches. Like there's red wires going to black wires, going to yellow wires. It is a big mess. So that's gonna take some time to go through. But in the meantime, we figured out that the black wires should not be touching or making contact. And uh, the kill switch actually goes to the black wires up here. I'll show you guys. So there's a switch right here with the two black wires. That goes into the engine right here. And I was like, oh, just for fun, let's see if we're getting contact, which we shouldn't. Check this out. So, we'll try to connect both black wires here. You should not be hearing a beep. So that tells me that either the points are not uh, opening at all, or something's grounding out in the system, causing it not to spark. So I think we've got to tear off this side of the engine and uh, take a look at those points. They're right behind here. Ooh, looks like a mousey got in there. A little mousey mouse. I wonder if he chewed up the wires in there. Alright. So now this thing comes off of this pulley. Off. Basically, just a pulley system. Take the belt off. Alright, now we can take this off and uh, we gotta pull that flywheel. Alright, will this not come off? It's a question. Looks like there's a plate on here. It's the other side of the pulley. I see all the crap coming out of it. You can see the points in there. Points are opening and closing. I can hear it clicking on something. You hear that click? Got 
kind of see it open and close. See that right there. So you can see the opening and closing at least. Huh. All right, let's try to get this flywheel off if we can. All right, so I cleaned up the points a little bit with some sandpaper. Um, I didn't have to take off the flywheel. There's plenty of room to work in there. And uh, plus, I didn't have the right flywheel puller. So I cleaned up the points. Those are looking good. We're still not getting spark. So I see two wires going into the coil. So I wonder if those came loose or something. Grounding out to the engine right here from the brown wire. See the brown wires are grounding out, and then the blue are going in to each coil, and they look really clean. And then it's pretty tight on here. All right, so this blue wire should spark. If we're getting a good reading from the points here, that should spark on the frame right here. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's sparking good, that blue wire is. Let's see if the other one is over here. All right, so it looks like if I unplug this one without unplugging that one, it sparks. But if I unplug both of them at the same time, this one doesn't spark. And then if I plug in this one and then test spark on that one, it gets spark on that one. So it's like you need one blue wire plugged in at all times for it to spark. So both wires to the coils are sparking. Now we just need the coil wire to spark the spark plug. All right, check this out. <laughs> I think we got some spark now. Oh yeah. Both plugs. Woohoo! So the points ended up being really, really dirty. I had to take a file and actually file them down before I took a little piece of sandpaper and I guess that wasn't enough. So we had enough spark to go to the coil wire but not enough to actually go past the spark plug and, and uh, go through that gap. Alright, back at it today. We got spark um, last night, late last night. I was working on this thing. Oh, look who came to check it out. Little Vin. See if he likes it. What do you think, Finn? Do you approve of the tri sport? Seems like he likes it. Yeah, come here. Pretty cool. <laughs> you look pretty cool in there. I think he's ready to take a ride on it. But uh, today we've got to do a compression check, make sure we've got compression, and then I'm guessing this carb needs to be clean. So let's do the compression check next. Hopefully each cylinder has compression. They did give us an extra engine, so I'm a little bit worried that it might not. So we'll see. We'll check the left side cylinder first. We're looking for over 120. That would be good. So hopefully we'll hit over 120 with it. 
All right, here we go. Throttle open. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's pretty good, actually. It's hard to do it. Throttle open, too. It's not too bad. About 1.30. So, that's pretty good. Not horrible. All right, let's do the right side next. Right side cylinder, what do we have? First pull, almost 100 already. That's good. That one's a lot better. That one's almost 150. We're at like 140. So that one's a lot better. So right side seems a little bit better than the left. But we do have compression on both cylinders. So now we just need some gas getting to it. So let's get the carburetor off and start digging into that. I'm guessing that needs a good cleaning. All right, so we disconnected the throttle cable. This was going into here. We took out the plate for the air filter and then uh, all the lines. So this is the backing line coming from the engine. It goes directly into this carburetor. And then there's a gas line that goes down to the nipple down there. And that was right here. I took that off. So we'll have to reattach that for testing purposes later. But let's get this whole carburetor off and see what's going on with it. either where gaskets on it right here and right there we'll leave those on but uh, now we've got the carb off and there was no cable for the choke so I'm not sure where the choke originally was I'm guessing somewhere up here maybe I don't know all right I spent a little time and cleaned up the outside the carb it was really gunked up so we got that cleaned up a little bit. Um, I noticed, however, there is a little jet coming out right here. Let's just see if you can spray through that, because that should not be open. Nope, it's closed, never mind. So that's, that's uh, closed off. That's for oil injection. Must have been an option back then or something on these. See if this carbs clean or not. I'm guessing no. <laughs> the main thing I want to check is to see if the pump is working and if uh, the needle is opening and allowing gas flow in. I'm gonna leave that together right there. I'm gonna tear that off. 
there's this gasket. I'm gonna rip that. Looks good, everything looks pretty clean so far. And I don't wanna break anything off of here. That one's starting to come, it looks like. Huh. It's a really light tap on here. Popped off, there we go. I'd like to open that one up in there. Because that's where there's another piece. That diaphragm's a little hardened up right here. Let's just see if the needle's opening and closing. Oh yeah. You can see the opening and close in there. That actually looks pretty good in there. I think I might just put it back together. It does not look dirty. If this car was dirty, you'd see a bunch of old gas in here. And the needle's opening and closing, so. We're gonna put it back together. That's our best chance at, uh, at uh, getting this thing to run right. I'm not gonna take this one apart. It's gonna rip the gasket in there, so. We're just gonna put it back together how we found it. And um, we'll try starting it up like that. If it doesn't start up and idle and stuff, um, we will tear back into it. But everything looks good so far. And then we'll wet that pump with gas and that should work. So we'll put that back together, back on the machine, and we'll attempt to start this thing up. Carb didn't look too bad. Let's get some premix going in here. Go, gas is filled up. All right, will this thing fire up? Let's see. <laughs> Turn it to on. Here we go. She fired up. Awesome. 
you could see the mouse nest coming out of the engine right there. Blew everything out. But uh, yeah, it sounds really good, really healthy. And it was idling. I think we ran out of gas, but man, sounds awesome. All right, let's add some more gas to this thing. See if the fire back up. All right, we've got gas in now. Let's see if we can get it to idle without the choke on. Idle's a little bit low. Try it again. Wanting to move there. Out of gas again. <laughs> this thing is going to be insane. Man, that sounds really fast. So, we need to get a gas tank for it. I wonder if I have anything I can hook up right now just so we could test drive it. I'm gonna look around, see if I can find a tank. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to order one. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. All right, so I looked around, I could not find a gas tank. This one is just toast. I don't know if you can repair these or what. I don't think you can. I mean, it's pretty bad, it's split all the way through. So I'm gonna look for one on eBay, see if I can find the exact same one. If not, we're gonna try to just find one that'll work, like just an auxiliary gas tank. Kind of like this one, this one's a little bit too big. Kind of just like a tank like that with a gas cap coming out the middle. So we can kind of test it out. This one's pretty close. We could maybe use that. Might be a little bit big. Yeah, that's too too long. So we need to find a really small gas tank for like a lawn mower or something, like a push mower, and use that. But um, we've got a lot of work left to do on this thing, but we got the main part done, which is getting it running, getting spark, and um, I'm... <laughs> That's the first start in probably 40 years on this thing, which is crazy. I had it running, I was checking out the headlight. The headlight was not working, blinkers were not working when I had it running, so we'll have to look into that a little bit further. I did have the key in the second position and it still was not working, so we'll have to look into that. And then I wanna fix up the front brake a little bit, get that a little bit more loose. You can see it does kinda work, but it gets a little bit stuck. So I'm gonna lube that up a little bit more and uh, get this repositioned down. I'm gonna obviously deal with all the wiring issues and stuff like that before we take it for the first ride. And then I'm gonna grease up everything, all the fittings, all the bearings, make sure everything's good to go. So unfortunately, we have to wait until next video for the first ride. I was trying to get it done today because I really wanna ride this thing, but I think we should wait 
for that gas thing to come just so we can really see the full potential. And that would be pretty cool to register this thing and ride on the road too, because it is street legal, <laughs> which is insane. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the first video on the Tri-Sport 340. More to come, and uh, stay tuned for the first ride video. It's gonna be something. So yeah, anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.